Red Hat Enterprise Linux, RHEL, is a prominent enterprise-focused Linux platform. In this video, we're going to quickly cover a simple installation of RHEL 9.2 server without a GUI. During the installation, we're going to configure the network manually without a DHCP server providing an IP address. The installation steps are the same if installed into a physical device or to a virtual machine. Install into a public cloud provider such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, among others, will differ a little as most providers already have uploaded images. The steps here are the same for RHEL clones such as CentOS Stream, Oracle Linux, and Rocky Linux. We will cover system requirements, installation, first boot and updates, second boot, get operating system and hardware information, and appendix. The system requirements for RHEL are relatively modest, necessitating only 10 gigabytes of available free disk space and 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. For this installation, the guest virtual machine is configured with eight virtual CPU processors, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a 250 gigabyte hard drive. After we boot with our media, we are presented with the first GNU GRUB screen. GRUB stands for Grand Unified Bootloader and is what's typically used to boot into Linux systems. If you are unsure about the integrity of your installation media, you can elect to test the media prior to installation. Otherwise, select Install. Welcome to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.2. Select your preferred language. Under localization heading, select your preferred options. Since we don't have a DACP server providing an IP address, under the system heading, click network and host name. Click configure. Under IPv4 settings, select the manual method, click add, and enter the IP address settings. For NetMask, you can enter the mask in CEDA notation. Enter your gateway information. For our instance here, we're going to use Google's public DNS servers and leave the search domains blank. When complete, click Save. Provide a useful name for the host name. Click Apply and the slider next to Ethernet. Notice that we're showing as connected with an IP address. Click Done. Under Security Profile, we have the option to apply specific default security settings for specific use cases, including HIPAA and DISA state compliance. For this installation, we're not going to apply a profile. Under Installation Destination, you will see the installed drives. Under Storage Configuration, leave Automatic selected. We'll cover Custom later. Click Done. If the disk is not blank, as we have here, you will be presented to Reclaim Space. In this example, we have had a previous Windows installation. Click Delete All, followed by Reclaim Space. Under the software heading, connect to Red Hat, enter your Red Hat subscription information. This will allow you to download and apply updates. Under software selection, select Server. This will install RHEL without a GUI. Notice, however, that Server with GUI is now the default selection. For this example, we won't select any additional software. 
click Done. Under the User Settings heading, select User Creation. Enter the user's full name. This is just a display name, and it can be anything. Select the username, as this will be your login credential for the terminal session. The username is case sensitive. Check the Make this user administrator, as this will provide the user super user rights. Enter and confirm a strong password. We will leave the root account disabled. If you have a modern processor, you will see a warning about SMT being enabled. Since we cannot do anything about it during the installation, we'll just ignore it. Begin installation. Proceed to log in with your username and password. When you log in, you'll see that you will have a dollar sign prompt indicating that you are logged in as a standard user. Later, we'll cover how to switch user to root even though the root account is disabled. Fully update the system. Elevate your privileges using sudo, which means super user do. Enter sudo dnf update. When prompted, input your password. The system will update its inventory and find necessary updates. Type Y to continue with the update. If you are prompted to accept and import a GPG key, type Y to accept. Once the system is fully updated and you are back to the dollar sign prompt, type sudo reboot to reboot the system. To see the operating system name and version, type cat forward slash etc forward slash os dash release. To see full kernel information, type uname dash a. To see processor specific information, type cat forward slash proc forward slash CPU info or sudo ls CPU. To see BIOS, processor, and memory info, type sudo DMI decode. To see all hardware, type sudo ls hw. For a hardware summary, type sudo lshw-short. To isolate a particular hardware class, type sudo lshw-class class name. For each of the commands that span multiple pages, pipe the output to either more or less. Piping the output to less allows you to use the keyboard up and down keys to scroll through each line. Hit Q to quit. For the most part, to do anything that requires elevated rights, you will invoke the command by typing sudo. However, in the case where you may need to log in as the actual root user, even when root login is disabled, type sudo su dash and enter your password when prompted. Now you will see you are logged in as root, which is identified with the hashtag prompt. You can verify with the ID command. Type exit to return to your normal user account. Letting the installer perform an automatic configuration is fine for simple, typical installations. However, 
there are situations where a custom manual configuration is warranted. When creating a custom configuration, always create the boot slash EFI and slash boot partitions first. In this example, we're going to create additional slash var slash log slash opt and slash database mount points on a two terabyte drive. If a capacity is not specified, then the utility will allocate the remainder of the available disk space. For device type, leave as LVM for maximum flexibility. Use standard partition only if required. The default file system for modern RHEL systems is XFS. Change to EXT4 or another file system if desired or necessary. When completed, click Done, followed by Accept Changes. Most modern Linux distributions now use Network Manager to provide a simple, consistent way to manage network configurations with a robust command line interface called NMCLI. Type NM CLI help to see options and objects. Type NM CLI to see the interfaces. Likewise, you can type IP address or the legacy IF config to see the interfaces. Here, our interface is ETH0. Type NM CLI Connection show ETH0 to see all connection properties. Since we're only concerned with IPv4 address information, type NMCLI connection show ETH0 and pipe that to grep IPv4. We are interested in setting the highlighted properties. Using one command, we can set the IP address, subnet, gateway, and DNS. Notice that the IP address and subnet are set using seeded notation. Now we have to set the method to manual. Restart the interfaces. Check IP information via NM. CLI, IP address, or IF config. We quickly explored a step by step process of installing and configuring a simple RHEL 9.2 server. After checking system requirements, performing a base installation, applying updates and patches, and querying the operating system and hardware information, I hope this offered a better understanding of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and how its installation differs slightly from other popular Linux distributions such as Ubuntu. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.